Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm going to read you a part of this interview with Amanda Thayer. Uh, this is um, one of Chris's and Shanann's friend. It was actually the friends that he went and stayed with that night. So this is from 8-15, August 15th. Um, okay, so in the interview, Amanda tells the investigator on Monday, 8-13, Amanda and Nick arrived back in Colorado from Kentucky at approximately 2.30 p.m. Amanda had a few messages from friends of Shanann. They were asking if Amanda heard from Shanann. Amanda texted Shanann at 2.57 p.m. Hey lady, we just got back. Let's chat about this weekend. Amanda received a familiar auto reply from Shanann that she used whenever she was driving. Safety first, I'm driving with do not disturb while driving turned on. I'll see your message when I get where I'm going. The last part of the auto reply had some extra wording Amanda hadn't seen before, which stated, I'm not receiving notifications. If this is urgent, reply urgent to send a notification through with your original message. Amanda sent one more message to Shanann asking when Shanann was getting back to Colorado, but received no response. So isn't that weird? So at 2.57, well, that would have been after... Okay, never mind, because that would have been after the cops were already at Chris's house. And I'm trying to think, well, what time did he get home? Because why would that do not disturb me on? Is this before? That's what I'm trying to figure out. If this was before they found the phone? Because he he got home at... Yeah, it would have probably been around, around that time. So I wonder why the Do Not Disturb was on and it, did it think she was driving or... So I have a question. So if you have your Do Not Disturb on, will it know if you're driving? Because I'm, I'm trying to figure out, does it pick up like... When you're driving, doesn't sometimes you could have it on a setting like when when you're driving, it just knows, so it ha it the do not disturb comes on, or is it just when you put the do not disturb, you could set it to that like automatic setting that says, you know, I'm driving. I'm not sure. So I it just makes you wonder. Did he put that setting on? Was the car act or was the phone actually in a car like driving at that time? Is that why? You know, it said, do not disturb, I'm, you know, I'm driving. Because I know there are some phones or some settings where it, it'll pick up if you're driving and then it'll, you know, turn on. You could do the automatic where when you're driving, the do not disturb will come on, you know. Or, but I know there are settings you could put where you could say, you know, when I have my do not disturb, do this message, you know, I'm driving. So she might have just had that, auto, you know, that reply, like an auto reply for whenever she has the do not disturb that it just says that I'm driving. I'm not sure. But it just makes you wonder if she had the one where it, it kind of, you know, it did automatic. So when she was driving, it would say that. So does that mean, you know, he had the phone in the car with him, you know, when he was driving home from work? So that would answer the question what he did. One of the things he did when he went inside for like the minute and a half that he probably went upstairs and shoved the phone in the couch you know, maybe he did have it on him, you know, at work. So he might just hurry up and put it, put it in the couch along with the Apple Watch because the Apple Watch was shoved in there too. So it would, I mean, I guess it's not that big of a deal, but it would kind of, I'm just curious to know if he had the phone, you know, did he have it at work with him and, or did, you know, did he put it in the couch that morning I'm not sure what do you guys think on that and then the fact that she said the last part of the auto reply had some extra wording so reply urgent so I don't know why that would be you know so I mean it could just be like you just that morning he put the do not disturb you know but for some reason I'm thinking maybe he brought it with him I, I don't know okay so 
Rosenberg called Amanda at 4.09 p.m. on 8.13. They talked about Shanann being missing and shared thoughts. At 4.17 p.m., Nicole Utoff called Amanda. Utoff is also a Laval thriver. Utoff was upset about Shanann disappearing. Utoff talked to the police. Utoff told Amanda that Shanann's purse, car, phone, and the girl's medications were all at the home. Utoff was aware of the neighbor's security camera, which showed Chris backing up his truck and heading to work. Utoff said Chris had stuff in his garage for work. Utoff told Amanda that Chris's story had changed. Chris said Shanann was leaving with the girls for a play date at 5.30 a.m. Amanda stated she could not recall what other story Chris had told. Utah further told Amanda that Chris told Rosenberg one thing and told Utah another. When Amanda and Nick arrived home from their Kentucky trip and were unpacking, they were worried about Chris. So Nick texted Chris. Amanda and Nick decided to go see Chris. They arrived at Chris's house around 6 or 6.30 p.m. They asked Chris what happened and where was Shanann, what was known and not known. Chris's phone was blowing up. While standing inside the home near the doorway, Chris told Amanda and Nick the following. Chris and Shanann were having problems and were separating. Around 4 a.m. that morning, Chris got up for work and Shanann got up with him. He wanted to get it out and be done with it. Chris told Shanann he wanted a separation and wanted to sell the house. They had been talking about selling the house for weeks. Amanda stated that Shanann had not told her about that. Chris said things are really tight and they wanted a smaller house because they didn't need all that room. Chris said they got that house because it was like Shanann's house in North Carolina and it made her happy. When Chris left for work, Shanann was emotional and crying. Chris got a call from Utah around 11 a.m. or 12 p.m. Utah had been trying to get a hold of Shanann. Utah went to the house but couldn't get in. When Chris got home, Utah had called the police. He saw Utah peeking in the windows trying to get in. Chris opened the door and Utah let herself in and started searching the house. Utah was telling her son where to go and where to look at places in the house. Amina stated that by that time in the conversation, they had moved into the kitchen. Chris was pacing. Amanda recalled asking him questions about the windows and doors and if they were locked. Chris seemed numb and lost. His face looked like Amanda's when she lost her brother, almost like not believing it. Chris said he noticed a taxi cab charge on his credit card statement, which posted on 813. Amanda asked Utoff whom Shanann traveled to Arizona with and if she and Shanann took a taxi ride. Utoff told Amanda she and Shanann took one lift ride. Chris mentioned that it was too quiet in the house. He just wanted to hug and hold them, wanted them all to come back. Chris stated, it's empty here. I need my family back. Chris talked about how bizarre it was that Shanann didn't have her phone with her. Chris, Amanda, and Nick talked about going door to door to ask the neighbors questions, but they found out the police were doing that. Amanda and Nick were trying to call people for any information. Chris said that he had called the hospitals in the area. Amanda and Nick stayed at Chris's house until approximately 8 p.m. They offered to have Chris stay the night at their home. Chris said he wanted to stay at his house in case they came home, and he wanted to clean up the kids' toys. Chris said, I want to clean up for them when they come home. Yeah, right. I want to clean up for them. He wanted to clean up for himself. Now hearing that after the fact, knowing that he knew they weren't coming home. So, well, why was he wanting to clean up? You know, what was he trying to hide? I mean, we know what he was trying to hide. But not really, because if everything happened the way he claimed it did there probably wouldn't have really been too much to hide unless if it didn't happen that way you know so what was what was he able to clean up before nobody got to see you know because all those people were in and you know there was no search there was no more there was no people were moving things doing things and then he had all night to clean and do whatever he wanted to that house he could have done anything okay amanda got the impression that chris thought shanann left just because she was angry the next day 8 14 2018 amanda and nick were with chris most of the day they arrived at chris's house around 9 a.m and stayed until approximately 4 a.m there was a lot of silence during the day they talked about the news crews, some canines walked through the house, and police were all around. Amanda was spending time on Facebook providing updates. Chris mentioned that his dad was coming to town. Shanann's mother called Chris and was disrespectful to him. Huh. Amanda and Nick invited Chris to spend the night at their house, and Chris accepted. 
Amanda and Nick returned home. Chris still had news people at his house and waited until they left. In anticipation of Chris coming to the house, the Thayers ordered pizza. 15 or 20 minutes later, Nick told Amanda that Chris was going to get interviewed by the FBI. Amanda and Nick went to the Frederick Police Department at approximately 7.30 p.m. where they waited in their car until 11 when Chris came out. Chris said he wasn't allowed to go to his house since they were searching it that night and in the morning. Chris followed Amanda and Nick to their house. At the Thayer home, Chris talked about how the interview went. He said one guy interviewed him and was aggressive and accusatory, asking, what did you do with your wife and children? The interviewer then went back to nice talk and being supportive. Chris stated he was asked the same question multiple times in different ways. He was asked about a polygraph and, and he said he would take one. At one point, the interviewer left and came back and told Chris to come back in the morning for a polygraph. Amanda and Nick and Chris all went to bed. The morning of 8.15, Amanda and Nick awoke at approximately 6 a.m. and took their daughter to school. Chris was still upstairs. Chris came down approximately 10 minutes after Amanda and Nick returned. Amanda stated Chris seemed like a lost puppy and was pacing. Chris said he was going to go to work, but his work told him no. Chris was waiting to hear from his mom about his dad's flight. Chris left around 9.30 a.m. to get his dad from the airport. Chris and Shanann shared their Lexus. They previously had an Explorer, but they were currently just using the Lexus and his work truck. Chris worked at an oil company in the oil fields where he does maintenance. Shanann never mentioned anything about their financial situation. Amanda stated Shanann had lots of clothes and had her nails done about every two weeks. Shanann never said a word to Amanda about Chris seeing other women. At one point, Shanann speculated about Chris maybe having an affair, but dismissed it because Chris didn't have game. <laughs> oh man, it's funny. Amanda stated she left a message with a detective about the fact that Shanann always wore her eye watch, which was missing. Amanda stated she would preserve all the phone, text, and calendar data on her phone. Okay, so, um, kind of interesting things, like, well, that, I don't know, was he driving home with that phone, is that why that Do Not Disturb came on, or am I just being stupid and that's just like a setting when he turned on the Do Not Disturb, I'm not sure, and then the other weird thing is, um, Oh, yeah, the other weird thing is how Chris said he wanted to stay at his house in case they came home and he wanted to clean up the kids' toys. I want to clean for them when they come home, knowing that they weren't coming home. So, yeah, who was he cleaning for? Or what was he cleaning for? Um, and then, do we ever figure out that taxi cab charge? Was it for sure a taxi cab charge or was it a, a lift ride? And, like, who took the taxi cab? Where was it? Can you guys check for me or whoever comes to it first? Maybe I'll get to it. But if you guys know offhand or if any of you guys feel like looking or know offhand, um, was that taxi cab from Arizona? Was it in Colorado? What time was it? Just any details on that? I'm trying to think. I don't think I came across it in the Discovery for some reason. And I, I must have overlooked that. So... Let me know if you guys know about that. The taxi cab, which was posted to the credit card statement on 813. So that'd be kind of interesting. Huh. All right, guys. Well, I just thought I'd read that to you. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys. Have a good day.